Hey, and welcome to Singles Travel International's Luxury Galapagos Cruise in Ecuador. And this cruise is wonderful. It's March uh, 14th to the 24th, 2014. My name is Andrea. I'm from Singles Travel International, and we like to call it STI for short. And our presenter this evening is Diane Green, who has traveled to the Galapagos twice with STI. And she's here to tell us about her experience and also to share some beautiful photos with us. So, so uh, thank you, Diane, so much for joining us. And uh, I'll hand it over to you. Okay, you're welcome. And hi, everybody. Um, this is a sort of fairly rapid series of photographs to look at. I'll try my best to do a little speaking as we go along uh, to talk to you about this wonderful trip. I hope some of you get the opportunity to go on it. I enjoyed it so much the first time that I went and did it exactly again one year later. <laughs> um, and uh, if you've ever been on this trip or been there, you would certainly understand why somebody would want to go back. I have traveled a fair bit in the world, and I still find this to be the most fascinating place, particularly if you love animals. Um, it is really the only place you can go in the world where animals are not afraid of humans. So the trip starts off in Quito. This is uh, just a few pictures of Quito. This is the cathedral in Quito decorated with creatures from the different areas of Ecuador. Um, there's some uh, very nice stained glass inside, um, and um, the outside is quite fascinating, as I say, because it has all these different creatures. So instead of the usual gargoyles and things like that, they have creatures from the four regions. And so you have panthers and um, all sorts of funny things that you don't normally associate with a religious building, as you can see on the pictures that are coming up now. So we have a couple of days at the beginning of the trip in Quito in a very, very nice Marriott Hotel. Um, and the, the arrangements that are made in Quito for touring um, are superb. Um, you get to go to the um, Mitad del Mundo, which is the center of the, the Equator Monument, which uh, some pictures of that will come up shortly. There's the iguana, as you can see, on the cathedral. As I say, somewhat different than the European cathedral decorations. Um, and uh, everything is taken care of really, really well. Um, there are many, many street sellers in Quito, these charming girls and women who sell these really lovely scarves for a very, very low price, um, 2 $3, and they are beautiful scarves. I bought about 12 the first time, came back with about 60 the second time. Um, this is the central square in, in Quito, um, and all the buildings around it are very interesting historically. It is actually a UNESCO World Heritage Site, I think one of the first cities to be so. It's in a in a in quite a, a dip here, and you can see the, the um, statue at the top there. Um, it is a very uh, steep area. They are subject to a number of weather issues and things like that. They're also building a very large new airport. It's quite high, um, about 10,000 feet. So flying in and out can be interesting, but it's certainly very safe. Nothing to worry about there at all. Um, it's the, the presidential palace type of guards here. Um, this is another uh, church, and I'm sorry, I've forgotten the name of it. Uh, perhaps somebody who's been will be able to tell me that piece of information because I have forgotten. Um, Tammy, are you type, I've got a question, or is that just for, no, I guess not, okay. Um, we also went to Otavalo Market, uh, which is quite a famous market uh, just outside Quito. And uh, this is a wonderful place of bargaining for a wide variety of things, many fabrics and uh, T-shirts. A couple of participants on my first cruise there, uh, along with the guide that we had. And um, they, on Sundays, when you don't actually get to go on this particular trip, um, they have animals and everything like that in the market, too. It's a very, very big market. Lots of fun. And you don't have to spend too much money. Um, these are some examples of some of the weavings and uh, beautiful handmade things that you can buy. Um, I just came back from Peru and they had fairly similar things there. Of course, we were entertained by some musicians along the way as we went from different places. This was actually at a very nice luncheon stop that we went to. And um, this is the, the um, Equator Monument, the Mital del Mundo. And uh, you can go right up to the top and uh, look around. Interestingly enough, um, 
this actually is the wrong location for the equator. Uh, they have discovered um, with using more uh, sophisticated GPS system that it's actually, uh, I think, a couple of hundred meters away from where they thought it was. But the, um, the monument is still there, and you have to go and have your picture taken straddling the line, of course. Um, I did have a photograph of my foot on the line, but it, my foot looked so, it didn't look very attractive, so I decided not to put it in. <laughs> now here we are. This is where you fly out to the Galapagos and you fr see for the first time the beautiful ship, the Celebrity Expedition. This is Celebrity's smallest ship. It has a maximum of uh, under 100 passengers, which is the limit in the Galapagos for any cruise ship. And it is by far the best way to see the Galapagos, uh, the small ships that you can go on do not offer the same services and expertise and just plain luxury that this one has. It's a very casual ship. There's absolutely no need for any evening wear at all. Uh, the only requirement they have on wear is that you don't um, gentlemen wear shirts of any description, I think, into the dining room. So it's very, very casual and just a delightful ship to be on. Um, I don't know if everybody else is getting this, but I'm getting some slightly strange lighting effects on my screen pictures, so this man's face looks sort of gray and red. Um, it isn't actually that way, even though he is standing over a barbecue. And um, they, the food on the ship is very, very good indeed. It might not be up to the, the really top level of a large uh, celebrity cruise ship. Um, they have to bring all their stuff in through uh, Ecuador, but I think it's extremely good. I certainly had no complaints with the food, and they feed you very well. These are a couple of the um, the guides, the uh, qualified naturalists. I think there are three different levels of qualification on the Galapagos Islands, and the Celebrity Expedition has only the top guides. They're extremely knowledgeable and, and very entertaining as well, and um, it's great fun. These are some more of them. Uh, there were a couple that were there from the second year from my first year, so that was quite a lot of reunions going on, very enjoyable. These are the pangas that you get on. They're basically a zodiac. Uh, they're very safe. Um, they are very, very careful with how you get on. There are two people helping you on. There's a way of holding on to a person to get on. They take about 14 or 15 people in each panga. This is an example of what we would call a dry landing. Um, you'll see next slide an example of a wet landing. So this is somewhere where you would not be getting your feet wet at all. And this is a place where you would be getting your feet slightly wet, just a couple of inches, nothing serious, and you get a chance to dry them off and put your shoes back on. So that's what we call a wet landing. And you can see there's, I guess, about oh, 16 people on that boat. This is the, the icon of the Galapagos, the blue-footed booby. And now we're getting into a whole series of bird pictures that I've included. Um, blue-footed booby is, is the most um, well-known one there, and their feet really are that blue. The males and the females both have blue feet. I am told from the Galapagos Conservancy, of which I'm a member, that if the males don't get a partner one year, the following year they come back, their feet are bluer. You can imagine that there was some amusement on that. Um, there's a typical example of the blue feet. Uh, no photoshopping involved. This actually is a photograph that uh, is one of my best-selling photographs. Um, and uh, a lot of people really like this blue-footed booby shot. Anyway, it's very popular with kids and, um, and adults alike. Uh, this is another one with a little chick. They seem to be born at various times throughout the year. When we were there, there were eggs, there were quite new chicks, and there were chicks that have been around for, for quite a while. This is one that's certainly come along a bit further. And you are now muted. Coffee. The only way you can tell the difference between a male and a female is the size of the pupil of its eye. I have temporarily forgotten which one is which, but anyway. This is the Nazca booby. They are the most beautiful, creamy, white color. And again, I hope you guys are seeing better pictures than I'm seeing here because I'm getting a lot of strange light on the, uh, on the bird here, but hopefully you're getting a, a nice creamy white bird. Another young chick. I should mention, if you are a photographer, um, you do not need to carry big zoom lenses with you on this trip. 
these birds are all within literally a couple of feet. In fact, if you didn't stay away from them, you would actually have to step over them. And the same can be said for all of the animals on the Galapagos. A couple of Nazca boobies giving us a, a close-up, and this again was extremely close. I'd say those birds were, well, they were just at my feet. Um, this is uh, another uh, chick. Uh, completely not frightened. Um, um, it's just amazing place to, to see this. Another chick just sitting in the pathway. You have to stay on the marked paths, and your guide will take just you in your group of 16 or whatever was on the panga um, off in one direction. The next panga coming behind you, they'll walk off in a different direction. So you're never trailing along with 100 people, um, you know, as you can do in so many places. This is a mockingbird, and they are very friendly. They will just hop along. Uh, with you as you go. We had one on the first year that was uh, very inquisitive, and I think I put in a slide of him, which may be the next one. Here we go. And if uh, my friend Stacy is online, she will recognize that is her leg. Um, and there's a the mockingbird, and he just walked along with us. And you can see where Stacy's foot is, and he couldn't have cared less. And another person's foot also further over. Um, so it's just uh, amazing to have this situation. This is the famous frigate bird um, with uh, his uh, pouch inflated. Um, as they fly, they actually deflate them, so they have this sort of red, loose, floppy sack flying underneath them. Um, but they are truly magnificent, which is why they call them the magnificent <laughs> frigate bird. This is the waved albatross, a beautiful bird. They mate for life, and they come to the Galapagos. They start arriving in, uh, in March, so hopefully the March 2014 trip, you would start to see them coming back. They're gone in, um, they're certainly gone January and February. I'm not sure if, they, if they're there in December as well. They, have, they uh, say they mate for life, and when they meet each other, they go through an elaborate ritual. Every time they return to the, the nest, they just nest on the ground. Um, not... Uh, predators would be the iguanas and things like that, but they seem to, to do fine. And they do this marvelous squawking at each other where they'll both open their beaks. And um, yeah, it's, it's really quite something to see. So that's an example of that. And here's one uh, feeding a young one. You can see the young is a pretty good size here. This was, uh, these photographs were all taken in a November, um, but they've still got a lot of fluff on them. And they, they really are beautiful. You have this lovely waving um, effect of the feathers just at the base of their neck and along their side. That's why they call them the waved albatross. This is a pelican. Lots of pelicans there. Lots of fish equals lots of pelicans. And this guy was flying in. You get some uh, great opportunities to, to photograph them. Uh, again, very close up. Um, no fancy zoom lens on this. Um, I was described on this um, webinar as being a professional photographer. I, I had a bit of trouble with that. Um, I always think of a professional as someone who makes a living from doing something. I certainly make a little money, but I certainly do not make a living from it. Um, this is a, a pelican who was having a snooze, except that one eye had got his eye on us, just to make sure we weren't going to do something silly, I guess. But and uh, some, you get some nice shots of them in the surf and uh, things like that flying around. So, and again, I do hope that you're getting a better picture. Um, there are uh, flamingos on Galapagos, uh, something which surprises many people. And uh, here's one flying by. The second year we went, um, we didn't see any flamingos at all. The first year there was quite a nice number of them on one particular uh, kind of inland lake on one of the uh, on one of the islands. Um, the one of the benefits of the expedition is it does go to many different islands. Um, it moves every night and it also moves uh, during your lunch break. You go off in the morning to an excursion and uh, come back, uh, have a, a delicious lunch and uh, a chance to rest. No, I'm get, not getting paid by celebrity to do this, or SDI. Um, and, uh, but it really is wonderful. And then they, they move during that lunch break, and you go to another island or another section of an island and, and go back off again on another excursion. This is an oyster catcher. 
the um, some of the birds have some marvelous eye rings around them. There's a Galapagos dove that has this bright blue ring around its eyes. Just stunning. Just stunning. Again, um, a heron. Uh, they weren't at all worried about us. In the background on the rocks, you can see red crabs. Those are the Sally Lightfoot crabs. They start out very small, obviously, and black. And as they age, they get redder and redder and, and bigger and bigger. So you get some quite pretty ones. We'll see some pictures of those later on. This is a yellow warbler, a very pretty bird. And uh, there's not a huge amount of varied vegetation on, on the Galapagos. Uh, there are some photographs later on showing some of the scenes. Uh, some things you might recognize. Um, this yellow warbler, if you look just straight above his beak, he is, doesn't show very well on here, but he's just about to catch a fly. And uh, the reason for that fly was that there was a dead bird actually at the bottom of those bushes, and there were a few flies around, and the warbler was just sitting on the branches, picking them off as they took off from the dead bird. It wasn't disgusting. It was just nature. <laughs> this is a Galapagos uh, hawk. Um, they will eat the marine iguanas, and... Um, I can't see them on my photograph because of distortion, but behind him there are a bunch of iguanas. And even though he will eat them, they didn't seem to be particularly worried about the fact that uh, he was sitting there, which is uh, somewhat curious. Um, it's very nice to be able to get that close to a hawk. Uh, birds of prey usually are not terribly happy to get that close to people. Just so that I make sure that I'm not talking to nobody, could somebody like type hi or something so I know that I'm still alive? <laughs> um, the, there's a huge variety of uh, shorebirds around. And, uh, oh, okay, the pictures don't seem to be advancing on my screen. I'm getting a message from Barbara. Uh, what picture are you looking at, Barbara, now? You should be looking at a bird. And I got a hi from Jamie. Thank you, Jamie. Um, I hope the rest of you are getting advancing. Uh, and Tammy says that she's seeing the advancing just fine. OK. So Barbara, I hope now things are advancing. Um, actually, this one is not advancing at this point. I've been looking at this particular bird myself for some time. Oh, OK. Barbara's now saying crabs. And thank you, Marcia, for that comment. Um, OK, and Stacy's seeing things out of sequence as well. So it has to do with internet speed, I'm being told by Tammy. Right now, I'm looking at a picture of a penguin. So I'm just going to hope, I'll just talk to what I'm looking at and hope you guys eventually catch up with, with what I'm looking at or, or figure out what the heck I'm talking about. Um, the Galapagos uh, has a small penguin, um, uh, the Galapagos penguin, and it is the only penguin that is north of the equator. Now, having said that, it, the Galapagos Islands are right on the equator, so some of the islands are just north of it. So it's a little bit sort of cheaty to say that they're the only ones north of the equator, but eh, basically that's where they are. There are a couple of different currents going around the Galapagos. One is a cold current and one's warm, and so that's why the penguins come up, and they're very friendly. Uh, this is one of my favorite photographs of the, seal li the sea lion. You can tell it's a sea lion because it has ears. Um, very, very friendly creatures, uh, not scared at all. This is a, a mom and baby. They were having a great time uh, playing in the water. And um, uh, they were, I actually have some movie of these two guys, and they were sort of playing a, a tag with each other. This is a much younger baby. Uh, the mothers come onto the land and give birth, and they're basically... Um, mated at the same time, almost, um, for the next round. So this mother had got a young baby and had also got uh, a baby a few months old um, who was trying to get milk as well and kept being pushed away. So that was a little sad, but uh, I think he was fine. He was surviving. One of my favorite photographs of the seal, the guy here who's kind of scratching his, the sea lion, I should say, kind of scratching his nose. And... Um, that is also a very popular photograph with the buying public, as they call it. <laughs> um, anyway, he's kind of cute. 
and somebody said he's giving us a kiss. Oh, that's the other sea lion, I guess, yeah. Um, this guy was just cavorting around the rocks, and uh, I just liked it because the, the nice slickness of the, the coat. Uh, we will see a couple of photographs from uh, the morning excursion uh, out to kick a rock. That'll come up. Um, and uh, this again, this sea lion was just asleep, uh, or dozing anyway, and uh, just literally a few feet, feet away. Um, okay, I'm now getting a message from a Brenda who says, I see great pictures but can't hear anything. So, um, Andrea, hope you are listening to these issues and maybe uh, give Brenda some <laughs> advice. If you can't hear anything, you can actually um, go on the left-hand corner and type okay. uh, click on the information and then the button listen. Okay, I could hear Andrea on that one as well, so that was good. Um, yeah, the, the sea lions are just lovely, and they are great fun in the water. Uh, you get um, three or four opportunities to snorkel, including one excursion where you can go out on a, deep, a deeper sea snorkel. I didn't do that one myself. Um, I prefer to be able to touch the bottom from time to time, um, uh, but I understand it was quite good. Um, the water is uh, in November is uh, chilly. Um, the expedition provides you with wetsuits and masks and snorkels, or you can take your own, of course, um, and fins. And um, the sea lion that we're looking at here, lying on the rock, just completely relaxed. We're all around him, and he couldn't care less. Um, and uh, I'm not sure if this is the one uh, who was in the water. This was actually in a little town. This man was not part of the STI group, and we were actually a little annoyed with him and our guide because he was sitting on this bench and that sea lion was uh, snoozing. The trouble is when he got up, there was a potential for that sea lion to get upset. Um, you really should not step over them. We did have one person who stepped over one on one of the ex – and the, the sea lion just turned around and – and caught her on the leg. Uh, it was a minor bite, but you know you really shouldn't step over the middle of a sea lion. It's it's not it's not smart. But this guy was not going to move. Now this sea lion, this boy, oh boy, this was fun. This was all our snorkeling equipment, and uh, we had left it up on the beach. And we came back from doing something. We went for a walk, and this sea lion had decided that our towels and equipment were really, really much softer to lie on than the sand. And so he came back, and he kept on. I have actually several photographs of him rolling around in different positions on top of the equipment. Um, this is a different um, sea lion, but uh, you can see uh, snorkeling in the water. Uh, there's a few people there that have got flotation devices. They will provide you with those if you are really uh, not confident at all. You could see the panga in the background and the ship. And here's um, some people with underground camera, underwater camera. It's a very good idea. This sea lion was just racing around. I, uh, I was swimming at one point, and he just bumped into the side of me and then shot off. Um, thought it was great fun. They blow bubbles at you, and you can blow bubbles back. And this lady is actually uh, snorkeling with a sea turtle. Uh, another wonderful experience. They're a lot easier to film uh, because they move nice and slowly. It is pretty much impossible to get a really good shot. Well, I have got one um, of the uh, the sea lions because they just move like rockets. And here's an, another turtle. This is, in fact, to be perfectly honest, uh, turtles uh, having sex. But there you go. Rhea asks, does the expedition provide wetsuits? Yes, they do. They provide all of that. That's all included. Uh, also included in your trip, although it looks uh, expensive up front, they include all the gratuities. And for those of you who like a drink, they also include all the alcohol you can drink. Obviously, all the excursions are included. The park entry fee is included. I believe the first time, uh, essentially, you could come off the boat with a $10 bill on your, uh, on your uh, account. Uh, this is the track of a turtle that has gone inland to lay eggs. And they lay them in these dips and then kick it and then come back down the beach. So that's what we actually followed this, this uh, turtle uh, we didn't see the turtle, but we saw the, the tracks. So yeah, the, the price of everything is included. And you know, the flights out uh, to the Galapagos and back, the three nights in the hotel, it is actually an astonishingly reasonable deal when you add all that together. Um, this turtle had just come out of the water. He was sort of, or she was uh, kind of half, 
half wet, half dry. And uh, we were just walking around it, and uh, it couldn't have cared less. Uh, I got fairly close. The, the guides ask you not to touch any of the animals, obviously. Um, one of the things with the sea lion babies in particular is that they will just come right up to you and uh, want to touch you. And when they get within a couple of feet, we would back up. But um, if we hadn't backed up, they would have been in your lap. So um, I think there might be a photograph of that later on. This is a um, distorted photograph, of course, because it's through the water, a bit of a, 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 uh, a stingray, I think it is. So um, just shut that in just to show some of the other creatures. And the next one, I don't want you to be freaked out about it, is a shark. However, it is not the person-eating kind of shark. Um, they, are, uh, they don't come around people. There's, I don't think there's ever been an incident of anybody getting bitten there. That they're not that type of shark. So you really don't have to worry about that at all. And I think we saw a couple the first year from the boat, from the ship looking down. Um, I don't think I saw any the second year at all anywhere. This is um, uh, the large-sized Sally Lightfoot crab. They're very uh, colorful. And, of course, on top of the black lava, which is on this particular um, island, um, it, uh, the colors are pretty stunning. Um, Depending on the age of the islands, depends on their characteristics. There's a couple of them. They're just about to. They're facing off to have a fight. Um, there was a piece of fish uh, over on the right, and uh, one of them eventually got it. But they had a, a little fight first, and uh, one, after a couple of slips, one slipped off. This is the morning, the 7 a.m. morning excursion, and uh, my friend Stacy, watching, will know, will recall that we arrived at the boat deck at about one minute after seven to see the last ship leave, the last boat leaving. But they came back for us. It was extremely embarrassing. So this is the sunrise on Kicker Rock, and it's just a couple of huge pieces of rock out in the middle of nowhere. Um, but you go around it, and you can uh, there's quite a bit of marine life on it and around it, and it's a, a wonderful excursion to see the sunrise. Um, this is a typical uh, wonderful beach uh, with the, the mix of the the sky, the sea colors, the beautiful white sand in this section, and um, this uh, lava. This, if you've ever watched Master and Commander and various other movies, you often see this particular thing on there. Uh, the makers of Master and Commander, a Russell Crowe film, wanted to film all over the Galapagos. They were very severely restricted, much to their annoyance, but they did film in this area, and you can actually see that famous pinnacle of rock um, on, on, in that film, which is actually quite a good film. Uh, this is typical of a sort of cone that you get. Um, the islands are a huge variety of ages, and they are slowly slipping, I think, uh, in a southeasterly direction, I think. Um, but some islands are quite old and are, have rounded tops. They've been worn down by the, the wind and, and water. This is mangrove swamp. Um, uh, and the new ones are, are very new indeed. In fact, we were standing on one spot where our guide told us that 30 years earlier, um, that particular spot was, I think he said, five meters underwater, and the coral was still there on the land. So that is very strange to see these huge lumps of coral sitting on a piece of land. And when he banged on the ground with his staff, it was hollow. It was a really amazing moment. This is a... a sort of typical sand dune, some of the nice vegetation and bits of dead tree. There's not much in the way of trees on there, but uh, certainly each island has its own particular characteristics, um, depending on its age and um, somewhat to do with its size and how much it's been beaten down by the weather. Um, the Andrea was worried that my slides were too... Were, uh, going to be too fast, but they're not. <laughs> um, you do get this lovely uh, patches of uh, sedums and various other bits of vegetation that grow up mixed in with, with old trees that have uh, died. There's obviously not a huge amount of rainfall in the area. Um, there's the, uh, the lovely expedition, and you can see a panga on the, on the left. They shuttle backwards and forwards all the time, so if you are on the land and you uh, need to go back to the ship for some reason, there's always somebody on the beach uh, with your life vest, um, and we'll, they'll take you back. 
this is a sort of blowhole on a wonderful uh, wonderful walk that we go to uh, on some cliffs, and you can see a little sea line in the water on the uh, on the right hand side as well. Um, so yes, I'd say safety is a very big consideration there, and they they take it very seriously. Um, but there are no toilets uh, on these little islands, so you uh, need to balance your intake fairly well. Although I did see one person uh, make use of a passing bush, or passing bush. These are the uh, land iguanas. These ones do not go in the water. Um, they probably arrived on some sort of floating uh, freight from some other island at some point in the, in the distant past. The islands, of course, were very heavily used by uh, whalers, and they figure that they took about 200,000 of the land tortoises uh, for fresh meat. But the, um, they did try the iguanas, but didn't find them very tasty, and I think they would take them if necessary. So these guys will eat the cactus pads right off the cactus bushes, and the spines just come out through their cheeks. This is just a little lizard thing. Um, the females and the males, uh, this is a, a, let's see, I'm not sure if that's a male or a female. I can't remember which one it is, but they will have quite red tummies. Uh, again, not concerned. Um, probably a couple of feet away from it. I, I didn't have any fancy camera with me um, on either one of these trips or a big lens. This is a group of the marine iguanas, and these are the only iguanas in the world that go into the water in this uh, location, uh, I've been told anyway. Um, they can only stay in for a limited amount of time, but they eat seaweed and stuff like that off the rocks. Each island, or uh, there are about three different varieties that we saw. These guys who have sort of red patches on them uh, another island where they were just gray, and another island, and we should see some pictures of those, where they were actually green uh, tinged. And here's here's a green one here. And this guy was quite happily coming towards me and probably would have just walked over my leg if I hadn't moved. <laughs> um, so people find them a little in, uh, intimidating to look at, but um, they certainly aren't, and you uh, you just walk around them. They I say again, they just couldn't care less. So uh, but they have to come out into the into the sun to warm up and can only be in the water for a limited amount of time. But they have a la Darwin um managed to uh to do this and Stacy forgive me on this one. I did not get your permission for showing this photograph so don't sue me. Uh but this is just to show how close you know that this iguana uh, just couldn't care less about uh the fact that somebody was right by taking a photograph. So sorry about that, Stacy. <laughs> I do have your legs in another photograph later on. Um, and uh, the, they have this marvelous medieval look about them, don't they? This sort of armor-plated look, and um, really quite fascinating. Um, but um, not scary. Uh, they are only vegetarians. Uh, I don't think they would take a bite out of anybody. They're not big enough for that anyway. Um, they will huddle together, and you'll see several on top of each other in a sort of semi kind of pyramid effect uh, to, to get the maximum amount of warmth that they can back into their bodies before they go into the water for another nibble on a rock. This guy is doing just that. He's got a nice uh, patch of sunlight, and uh, he's very artistically um, balanced on this rock. Thank you very much, Mr. Iguana. Um, they, they sort of, uh, people think they're sneezing, but they're actually sort of spitting salt out from their noses. They take a lot of salt in, obviously, when they're eating the seaweed on, in the water, and they eject it through these nostrils. Um, they also will uh, sort of spit at each other when they're, they're threatening, and they do a kind of head-bobbing dance as well to threaten somebody who's getting too close into this area. Uh, that, that scene you're looking at now, a very good chance those two are going to head bob at each other. This particular area here was around some beautiful uh, lava sort of caves, and the, the water there was stunning green color. It was absolutely gorgeous. Uh, so both times I went, the weather was slightly different, and the people were slightly different, and the, uh, the percentage of the animals that we saw were different. I... This was the only iguana I think I saw with its tail up like this. Um, so that's why I put that in. It's kind of interesting. 
this is where we went to one of the two towns that she will visit because uh, there are many towns on the uh, small towns on the Galapagos and one or two fairly big ones. Um, it is not all a protected area, unfortunately. And this is the Charles Darwin Research Station. This is oh, um, poor old George, the uh, tortoise who uh, has just recently died. He was the last pinter tortoise they found on the Pinter Island, and uh, they brought him back to the research station to try and get him to mate. He did mate, but none of the eggs were ever uh, fertilized, fertile. So, so his line has died out. Um, tortoises are very interesting. These guys have got a very low saddle uh, shaped. Um, uh, thing here, uh, what do you call it, shell, and um, that means that where the island that they came from, the vegetation was very low. The ones who have got much more of a of a saddle shape, um, those ones uh, have vegetation up high, and their shell changed because they had to be able to stretch up higher to reach the vegetation. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, little birds will come along, and the the tortoises will lift up in the air like that one was doing to allow the little birds to go in and peck some of the, the little critters that are around them, and then they lower back down. And I got quite worried about the bird getting stuck in there, but anyway, they, it seems to be a very uh, synergistic arrangement where everybody uh, does quite nicely out of the deal. This guy obviously has come from a an island where the vegetation is low. That is uh, yours truly's legs in the background. However, I'm much thinner than that now. I just want to add that in. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, this is, uh, and again, this photograph and the next one of, uh, uh, of uh, my friend Stacy um, uh, is just to show that, uh, you know, how close you can get. These guys are in the wild. This is not at the research station. The last few slides are all out. We went to a sort of farm place, and uh, they just, uh, we were allowed to wander around, and there are just many, many tortoises. A turtle, uh, tortoises. Oh God, now I'm doing it. Tortoises. And this guy was just saying hi. It has a sort of ET quality about it, doesn't it? It's like a space alien. I think it's the nostrils that do it. Anyway, um, that picture is, I believe, on the STI website. Crossing the equator. Well, party time on the expedition. Uh, every evening there was um, entertainment. Uh, there was a very nice guy playing music. Um, and uh, the guides and everybody would, would mix up, and um, as it was free drink, um, nobody gets drunk on it, though, because uh, it is not a party boat, um, because, you, you know, you're too busy, really, going to, to things. But having said that, you certainly can have a lot of fun. And they do a big crossing the, the equator um, uh, party, and somebody gets picked on as being the queen, and uh, it's, uh, I won't tell you too much it goes on, because... If you ever go, you don't need to know the secrets before you go, but it's, it really is fun. And obviously, we have a lot of beautiful sunsets. Um, the sunlight on the water at night was stunning. Uh, some nights, they turned the lights on outside the ship, and uh, the lights attracted uh, a number of creatures who would swim around, it, and that was really wonderful to see going around the ship at night. And I think that is the last slide. So if anybody's got any questions or anything. Okay, I'm going to unmute everyone so you can ask any questions. I just uh, I want to thank everyone for joining us first and uh, for our Luxury Galapagos Cruise in Ecuador presentation by Diane Green. And it is March 14th to 24th, 2014. So if you're interested, join us at www.singles.com. International, singles travel international.com.